Okay, I'm at my deer larder now, at Albar larder, and I'm breaking up the last of the season's fallow deer. And I thought, rather than cooking today, we'll do a little bit of butchery and see how we take a deer down to its component parts. So here we've got a lovely fallow deer. As you can see, all the information we need here. It tells me exactly where it was shot, by whom on what day, all the information. It's been inspected and stamped by the government vet. There are the marks with our own number. So this is why I believe our venison is so good because it's the highest level of traceability, beautifully prepared. So, this deer is shot in the neck, so it's got a very clean carcass. I'm going to start off by taking off the shoulders. I'm just going to go nice and wide like this. Next, I'm going to go under there, break it open as I said, pull it way up, go up and around, and then off comes the shoulder as neat as you like. Okay, next I'm going to take the neck, I'm going to take the neck about there by the first rib. So I'm going to go here, like so. I'm going to take my bone saw now. Beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to trim it up. I'm going to take these flags off there. And I'm going to run them to the halfway point down the rib where it joins sort of where the diaphragm was. Try and keep everything nice and even. Then I'm going to try and keep the ribs fairly long. So I'm going to go in a diagonal like that. Like that. Okay, that's one flank. I've taken off both flanks and now we've got a nice saddle trimmed to the same length and I'm going to take it through and start breaking it down. So up she comes. Okie dokie, so I've come out of the, uh, the cold room in the larder and here I am in the butchery area and uh, what I always do when I'm breaking up a deer is I always have a big bowl of soapy water next to me here so I can constantly wash my hands and you just don't want to get blood under your fingers it's impossible to do this wearing rubber gloves you're best off having super clean cloths clean your hands clean your tools make sure everything's clean make sure everything's sharp as well I like to keep the knives sharp when I'm doing this my knives sharpen them on a steel 20 degree angle to the blade okay so I'm going to start off by separating the uh, the two haunches from the saddle. So if you come and have a look in here, what we've got here is a little, there, you've got, that is the sacrum. That's the flat joint that um, the whole spine rotates upon. That's why we get backache when we get older. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a nice cut straight to there and there. I'm just gonna get my saw in there. You really can't beat a good bone saw when you're doing this sort of thing. It genuinely makes life so much easier. Okay, so there's our hindquarters. I'm just gonna separate out the saddle here. So I go down behind the first rib like that, make a cut. Lovely. Like so. And there we have a beautiful saddle like so. So essentially that's the hard work done. I'm going to take the flanks of the saddle off here and here and they will go in my mince pile to make my sausages tomorrow because tomorrow I'm going to be making sausages out of all the trimmings. But right now we've got lovely saddle, lovely rack which we're going to French trim and turn into chops and roast in the wood-fired oven later in the week for dinner which is going to be amazing. But now for the bit that really matters, and this is what matters to me. So I'm gonna cut down between those hind legs like that, and I'm going to start working my way around the, the H bone, which is, the H bone is the, the pelvic girdle, basically. And I go in here, and I just kind of follow the bone, and you'll see suddenly then, look, there, I've popped out, come in close, come in close. There is the joint, and I've worked my way around it, and now very importantly, make sure that you follow the bones and you don't go too deep with the knife. So I'm gonna go right underneath the bone in there at an angle, like so. 
and that, a lot of people go straight down and they miss the chump, which is this bit here. So there you go. That's beautiful. One haunch, and now I just repeat on the other side. Okie dokie, now I'm gonna take the shanks off, and just like lamb shanks are popular, fallow shanks are amazing. You run your finger up the inside until you feel a little bump just there, and then put your knife in, and then you just have to wiggle your knife, and it goes straight through the flat joint there. You don't need to saw the shanks off. And to prepare a shank for the oven, all you do is cut the Achilles there, cut cleanly around the hot, scrape it backwards, like so. Like so, look, lovely. That is a clean shank. And then you just take your saw. And there you go. So this is how to cut those parves. And yesterday on my little film, I, I cooked a parve. Well, this is how we cut them up. So here's your back leg, your haunch, your ham. Okay, the, the bone runs at a slight curve like this. So I'm gonna take a clean cut down to the curve and I'm just going to use the, the very tip of my knife there's the bone because I don't want to go any deeper than the the bone into the muscle structure there are several ways of doing this this is the way I do it and this technique is called seaming and it's uh, the, the old traditional continental way of butchering is seaming now the meat so in we go lift the bone up separate it out And then that is the shank there, there's the bone. And my dogs absolutely love this, so I'll save one each of these up and then they can have a treat. And then all you do is you just open up the muscles. Any bits like that, which is off the, the bottom end of the leg, that goes into our sausage pile. Okay, here we go. So it will naturally fall apart into seams, which is why it's called seaming. You can see there, there's a seam, so we just cut that, one. This cut here, the salmon, you can see, otherwise it's called false fillet, because unscrupulous people have been known to call this the fillet, two. And then I'm gonna turn this around, and here we have the chump, right there, or the top rump, which just peels off. And I'll just trim that very gently. So we have chump, salmon there, There we are, the silver side here, I'm now going to trim off. And I'm quite brutal with trimming because I can use most of it for my, things I can't use, I'll put there in a little part. So just work neat. And take all that silver off the side and that I won't keep because that will clog up a mincing machine. It just isn't great. Okay, dokie. It's interesting to look at these deer now at this time of year, right at the end of the season. And contrary to what people think, this is the hardest time of year for a deer. There's very little fat on them right now because they've just gone through the whole winter. And I'm just gonna take the sinew off the bottom of the silver side, just like I was skinning a fish. Put it down like so, flat, pull. There's the sinew, there's that lovely clean silver side. Easy. Trim that little muscle off the side. Trim up the ends. Again, nothing's gonna be wasted because that'll get turned into something delicious. Trim off the sinew. There's another primal. Okay, moving on. Where it blackens like that is where the, uh, when the deer was grallocked, it's been exposed to the air. And that's what happens when you hang a deer without its skin. So all I'm gonna do is just trim that back to the normal meat again. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just dried a little in the air. There we go. And now you can see here, it separates into two more, which we take out. And there's a bunch of gubbins on the inside and I just tend to just trim it. Bingo, there's another one. And the French call this a pavé. And a pave is traditionally a big fat chunk off the rump of an animal. But we can use the whole leg. So if I'm gonna turn this into paves, I'll just finish this one, show you what we get. So here we are. 
This is very often used as a roasting joint, but I like to turn it into more steaks. Let's remove the top piece. Like so. There it is. Lovely. So we've exposed that sort of nut of meat. Now there's a couple of big sinews running through the middle of it that we don't want to eat. So how are we going to deal with that? Well, I'll show you. So I'm going to take these sinews off. So you notice if you've got a nice sharp knife, you can just sort of roll, roll it across whilst taking, this, taking the silver off. And then in here, I'm going to remove this internal bit of sinew. All of that, which I'm cutting off, pretty much all of it is going to be minced and turned into sausages. I am not wasting it. So I'm trying to get the best possible prime cut out and then the secondary meat will all get used. All right, here's the important bit. You can now see that there's a, a diagonal seam here, sinew, and I can take it down at the diagonal like so, and then I can cut that out. That was in the middle of the, the steak. And now it's not. So you've managed to turn that rather odd looking piece into two beautiful pavés there and there. Now I'm going to cut this into three. Ba boom, ba boom. Okay, this one into four. There you go, look at those. So there you have it. Where's my horn shank? So what have we got? Well, out of a single haunch of a medium-sized fallow deer, this was a doe, a, a, a two-year-old doe at the most, carcass of about 50 pounds or 25 kilos. Let's look at what we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 fat, beautiful pave steaks, one shank, about two pounds of, um, well, I'm just gonna move that one out because there's a bit too much sinew in there. About two pounds, I would say, of, um, meat for grinding and then a little bit of meat for turning into stock which we will mince. So all round what an amazing animal. So off that whole deer and we're going to do more of this down the line we're just going to get 50 or 60 prime portions, we're going to get 20 or 30 secondary portions so 70 plus meals off a smallish fallow deer if you butcher it right and, and this is the joy to me of clever butchery makes the meat go further, gets more out of the deer.